Debbie. Welcome to my studio. Today we're going to be painting this koi fish design. This was inspired from a mural job that I was bidding for um, a big building down in San Diego. I presented three different design options and one of them was a koi fish theme um, and decided that I'm going to take a portion of that and turn it into a tutorial for you guys. So this is the section of the building that I'm going to be taking that design from it. Oh, and make sure to stay tuned till the very end of the video because I'm going to be featuring a whole bunch of your artwork and I want to show you off. So watch till the end. You might be featured. So we're working on an 11 by 14 canvas and we need to prime our canvas first. So I'm using a white gesso. Hopefully you can see that label. I'll list it down below in the description box. You always wanna prepare your canvases before you paint on them because when you get them in the store, they usually say that they're pre-primed and they are with a very light coat, but if you rub your fingers over them, they're very dry and porous, so they will suck up the paint so much that it's always smart to put a primer on them first. This brush has all kinds of junk in it. So I'm using a two inch, just a cheap brush from Home Depot. Um, you can use any brush. And you just wanna coat the whole thing with a fairly thick layer. Don't add water to it. And if you wanna add, you'll see it's kinda of thick, so if you wanna add a little bit of texture to your canvas, a little extra texture, you can paint it extra thick. And I just like to do a kind of a crisscross motion so you see a little bit of streaky lines here and there. It just gives a little more interest to the final painting when you have a little bit of texture on there. So while you're working on that, I wanted to share some exciting news with you. I have a sponsor for this video. They reached out to me about a month ago and it was so cool because it's this company called Skillshare that I've been following for a long time and I absolutely love what they do. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of classes for creative people like us. They have everything from painting to drawing, crafting, photography, music, ceramics, you name it. If it's fun and creative, I guarantee you'll find it here. <laughs> One of my favorite classes is by a woman named Sonia Razula. She runs a course called Start Your Creative Career. I love this girl because she's a creative person. She left her old company to start her own artistic business. So I know a lot of you out there are painters and maybe thinking about how can you start selling your work. Well, the first steps are making sure you look professional, like you're not just doing this as a hobby. And she teaches you all the skills, how to brand yourself, how to get the right look and vibe that fits your personality and your style of work. And just so many tips that are so, so helpful. I think you'll love her. Plus, she's really fun and cute and bubbly. So as you can see, Skillshare is a pretty awesome place to be a part of. They have very cheap memberships. It's less than $10 a month when you sign up for a year, but they were nice enough to offer a special deal to my first thousand subscribers to use the link in my description box. You can sign up for a free trial for their premium membership. I suggest get on there, soak up every single thing you can soak up before your trial's over. And if at the end of the trial you decide you don't wanna keep going, all you have to do is cancel. Now let's get back to our tutorial. Okay, it's been about 35 minutes and yeah, that's pretty dry. So let's get started. So I am, I did like a little rough sketch on paper of the basic layout that I'm gonna be doing. Um, I had somebody comment on whether, asking me if I had to use pencil, if they had to use pencil when they're sketching out, they said, could I use chalk? And absolutely, you can use chalk, and that is even a better idea than using pencil. So today we're gonna to use chalk. And I'll show you how easy it is to get rid of it and redraw it and everything else. When I'm painting murals, if I'm working on a big brick wall or something like that, I always use chalk on all of my murals. So we're gonna use chalk, and I think you'll find that's a great solution to using pencil, because sometimes the pencil lines can get too hard and tough to erase. I mean, you can always paint over them, but um, chalk is just a great, great solution. So I know this looks really rough. In my head, it's real clear. <laughs> so we're just gonna, I'm using a piece of blue chalk, so it will show up better. You can use any color you want. 
But blue will be great because the water is going to be blue, so it'll be easy for it to blend in if any of it's left behind. So we're going to do it kind of right down the middle. Start off doing sort of an kind of a stretched out S shape. So we'll just start like this and go like that. So the koi fish, they're a little bit thicker at the center of the body. So just start with a rounded head there, they're a little thicker. And then the tail, the body, part of the body actually stops about right here. So we're just gonna make a little point for the tip of the body. And we'll just curve around. We want this to have a lot of motion and movement, so we're just gonna curve that around. And then the tail is gonna be real skinny at the base, and we're just gonna kind of flare it out. This we're gonna kind of work with. Um, don't worry too much about the tail yet. We're just gonna kind of paint that when we get to that part, so you don't have to sketch it out exactly. And we're actually gonna paint the blue water right over this section. This is just so you can get the vision of where everything's gonna go. Then let's tweak the head a little bit. And if you don't like how it's, how it's going for you, just take one of your brushes and get it wet, tap off the extra water, and watch how easy this is. Say I wanna tweak it and make it a little bit skinnier there. I'm just wiping away. And if you don't, let me show you how easy this is too. Say you drew something you don't like, just take a wet, wet paper towel and you can wipe it right off. So thank you, I don't have the name of who asked if they could use chalk, but I appreciate your comment. Um, I love your comments, so, and I try to respond to every single one. Hopefully, if you've ever left me a comment, I've either liked it or commented back. I try to be real on top of that. Sometimes it takes me a little while to get back to you right away, but, um, also somebody asked me, um, what size canvas I use. Kathy Burke, thank you for your comment, because I think I forget to tell you guys sometimes. This is an 11 by 14. If I didn't say it already, I think I did, but I'm very forgetful, so... Sometimes I forget that and I really appreciate your comments because there's things I just, you know, slip right past me and I didn't think about. So I appreciate every single comment, even if it's something that's, you know, a, a criticism. I'm fine with that too, as long as you're nice about it. Um, okay, so let's do the, the, what do you call that? The nose, the mouth. So the mouth's gonna come out just a little bit. And again, we can kind of paint this as we go, but we're just gonna have a little bit of a pucker and then I made that head kind of fat, so I'm just gonna trim that up a little bit. And again, we can just take our brush, and I'm just gonna make it a little skinnier. And there's so many different shapes to these koi fish. When I was researching koi fish, I found fat ones, skinny ones, different fins, like there's a wide variety of <laughs> koi fish out there. I'm not a koi expert, so if any of you guys are, I'm sorry if I say anything that's, uh, incorrect about koi fish, or this, maybe this looks totally wrong to you, but I did get this shape from a specific photo I was working from. And then the fins, we're not really gonna worry too much about those because we're gonna add those. We want some of the, the water that we're gonna paint behind it to show through, because we want the fins to look kind of translucent. So we're gonna add those later, so don't even worry about those. Let's add a couple of lily pads. So let's go up here in the right corner. I think that would add a nice design there. We'll do a little little split there. And and we'll add some details and rigid edges as we paint those. Let's do another one. Let's just do let's make this one bigger. So this one you don't want them all to be the exact same shape cuz that just looks like that just looks boring in a design layout perspective. So let's make this one larger. And so I'm not confusing you there. So you erase some of that. You don't even have to worry about the chalk being completely gone if you make a little mistake here because the paint will paint right over it and it'll just blend right in. And because it's blue, that, that works well with the, with the green or the blue background, that'll be fine. And then let's do a little one down here. We'll do a little split in it there. And let's have just a hint of one over here. Just kind of like a long curved one like that. Okay, I think that's a good start. So the inspiration I'm working from today, I'm gonna to be using this section of that mural design that I um, just did a bit on. So I've already, usually you wanna to, wanna to use reference photos of like exact fish and 
exact sections of water you want to use. I already did all that research when I was designing these, so I'm just going to use this sample here, and that's what I'm working with. That'll stay. Okay. So as always, I'm using the same colors that we always use, the three primaries, plus white and sometimes black, but today I don't think we're going to use black. Oh, well, we are going to use black. A little bit. I'll bring that out later. Um, for now, we got the white, warm yellow, primary, brilliant blue, and magenta. This one's quinacridone magenta. So we're going to start with our one inch flat wash brush. I'm going to get it a little bit wet. We're going to paint our water first. So I'm going to take a scoop of blue and we'll start off with just a little bit of yellow. Mix that around. Oops, we're dripping. You want more blue than yellow. And let's, ooh, that's so pretty. We're just going to paint all of the water with this color. It's okay if it's not exactly like mine. Water can be all different shades, so just do whatever color you think's pretty. I'm just gonna get a base coat on this whole thing. Make sure you don't paint on your fish. And see, I didn't even mix it completely on my palette. I'm kind of mixing it as I go, so you see some variation. So you can mix it all the way if you want, but we're going to be doing so many layers that it's not going to be too important to have it completely mixed before you put it on the canvas. Barely using any yellow, it's mostly blue, just a touch of yellow, so it's giving it a really pretty teal kind of a color. Don't worry too much about the tail right now because we are going to. Probably going to paint over that tail just to give it some more of that blue showing through it, but we'll worry about that in a minute. And there's a lot of brush strokes in this. If you want to smooth them out, just kind of lightly flick your brush back and forth to get some of those brush strokes out. But like I said, we're going to be doing several layers, so don't worry too much if it's too streaky. Get my brush a little more wet. Mix a little more of that. That's a lot of green in there. That's okay. A little more blue. You want to be careful around the fish head and shape. Once you get that shape right, just make sure you keep that keep that shape that you want. It'll just be easier to work with later if you have it all worked out now.
Now you'll find while your paint's still a little bit wet, if you go over it too much, you're gonna start lifting paint off. So if you're having that issue, just let it sit. Let it dry a little bit. Don't worry if it looks kind of ugly right now with dark spots and light spots, that's okay. Because we're gonna be adding a bunch of texture and rocks to the background. So don't worry too much about it being perfect at this stage. I'm just gonna go over a few more areas. A little more blue. I got more green than I wanted. I want a, a little more of a bluish look. Bluish teal. Okay, my brush is pretty wet, so now it's starting to lift a lot. So I'm going to take my own advice and let it sit. <laughs> Clean off my brush. So our next step, we're gonna take, let's use our deciding between the five eighths and the Number eight filbert. Let's use the number eight filbert. And we're just going to take some of this color, take a tiny bit of white, and we're just going to mix it. That was a lot. <laughs> we just want it to be a little bit lighter than the shade of our, our background. So we're going to start adding a bunch of rocks. So these are just going to be oval shapes. It's okay if it doesn't show up a lot. That's okay to start with. We're going to start adding, put a little more white some ovals, like, you know, those round oval shaped river rocks. Just start adding a bunch of those just randomly all around. This first layer, we want to keep them a little bit darker. I got a little bit brighter there, but that's okay. And if you need to mix more of this, take a little blue, teeny bit of yellow, make a little side thing there. And you're just going to do them different areas. You don't want to do them too tiny. I mean, you can. It's just going to take you longer because you have to do more of them. So I'm doing some fairly large sized ones and have them go in different directions. I'll have this one go upward, this one go sideways, angled. Some can be a little bigger and some can be a little smaller. Have that one go off the side of the canvas. You don't want to get too bright yet. Let's mix some more of that blue, yellow, a little bit of white. Did you see that? Am I holding this up high enough? I don't know if I was holding that up high enough. A little blue, a little yellow, and a little bit of white. We're just doing these all over. Have some come from behind the fish. So it looks like he's swimming over the rocks. Let's do one here. Like a half of one coming out from underneath. Ooh, that got really bright, but that's okay. Some of these might have a little more green in them. That's okay to have a little variation. Again, make sure they're going different angles. Coming out from under the lily pad. You might see half of one peeking out from underneath. So I'm just kind of setting a base on them and then we're gonna to start to do some overlapping. So for starters, we're just kind of laying out 
all the bases of them. If you guys painted my uh, water lily lotus flower on my last tutorial, this painting would look really nice next to it. Because they're going to be kind of similar. If you end up doing the water the same exact color, that would be really pretty to have them hanging next to each other. I keep running out of that paint, so I'm just making a little more, adding a little, a little bit of white. This is a little more greenish, but that's okay. Now, if you find you kind of have the base pretty well covered, now you can start doing some overlapping on top. And it's okay if they're not perfectly solid color. It's even better if they have like a little bit of variation in the paint color, because it makes it look more realistic, because rocks are never just a perfectly solid color, typically. So if you have a little bit of water mixed into your paint, that'll help give a little variety to the color of your paint. When you're painting on top of this watercolor, some of that watercolor can show through and then it just gives it a little more texture on the rocks, which is good. Get my brush wet, adding a teeny bit more water to, or white to my mix. And then I'm just gonna kind of overlap on some of those rocks there. Again, switch up the direction so they're not all in the same direction because that would look really weird. You could do some more round, some more oval. Let's do a circle here. Sort of a circle. <laughs> And make sure you have some peeking out from underneath the fish. And you can mix up if you want to add a little more yellow to your mix in some of them and then add a little more blue to your mix in other ones. That'll just give a little variation of the color of the rocks because these rocks would probably be, you know, gray or have some browns in them if you could see directly if they were out of the water. But the water is giving them this bluish hue because the reflection of the color of the water is uh, taking over the look, overall look. Adding a little more water. A little more white. Ooh, that was a lot. Have a little. And when you're doing one that's underneath the fish, pretend like you're completing the whole oval. Just don't do it on top of the fish. So just kind of 
you know, make sure you get that shape as if it was continuing around. That's important because it would look like a really funny, weird shape if you if you don't kind of complete that whole oval. Does that make sense? <laughs> Makes sense in my head. Sometimes it doesn't come out the right way. See how I'm getting a little bit lighter with my color as I'm getting layered on top. So the darkest ones will be on the bottom and then you get just a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter. Don't get too light because we don't want the background to be the focus. So we don't want too much contrast back there. We want to keep it all pretty subtle so you don't really notice those rocks so much. Right now that is the focus because there's nothing else going on. But when the painting's done, we want that to just be sort of a subtle background. And the focus will be the koi fish. Just keep going. Keep layering. We'll get there soon. That's why, also why we're not putting a ton of detail into these rocks because we don't want them to be the focal point. So we're just keeping them kind of subtle. And by watering down your brush, it's giving some variation. See how there's like little bits of dark and that's just because we're just keeping it very thin and letting some of those background colors show through. Do some smaller ones. This is a somewhat beginner painting. If I was doing this as a like a realistic finished painting that I was going to spend hours and hours and hours on, I would get a lot more detailed in the rocks. I would still keep the colors more subtle, but I would make this a lot more detailed. This is just sort of a quick rendering of implied rocks. And I would put in a lot more time into these rocks if this was a like a commission painting that somebody wanted something really realistic. All right, I'm gonna do a few more, I think, and then we'll move on. kind of look overall and see, and it's okay if you don't have everything covered. There's some of the, the background showing through, that's okay. You just see if it's balanced, see if you feel like there's any spots that need another another rock in, in somewhere that feels missing, you get to decide. And see if there's any that really stand out that are you know too bright you can tone them down we can always tone them down later too like this one i added a lot of white to it so i'm just going to tone it down a little bit i'm going to add a little blue a little yellow a little more blue just gonna there we go just kick it back a little It's really bright. Tone it down a little. Helps if you stand back a few feet, take a look. 
Okay. And at the end, we might do like a thin wash of blue over the whole thing if I feel like it's too distracting. We'll see. Um, okay, so now let's take, I'm cleaning off my brush. I just want to make sure there's enough variety in the rocks. I'm going to take a little bit of white and just wipe off most of it. And I'm very watered down, so there's barely any white on my brush, and it's very washed out with water. And I'm just going to add some little swipes of white onto some of the curves of these rocks, just to give them a little bit of variation. I'm just smudging my brush around to kind of blend it in, just to give them just a little bit of a distinct overlap. Anywhere where it overlaps, I'm going to add just a little swipe, but keeping it kind of rough because I don't want it to be a perfect line. So just a little bit lighter than whatever the color is. Just where they overlap, just so it's obvious that one's on top of the other. And you can have your brush after you dry it off. It can be a little rough. You can Keep it kind of dry where there's just barely any paint on your brush and just kind of smudge it anywhere where the one's overlapping on top of the other and just sort of blend it in. So that gives it a little more separation. Just start with a curve and then if it's too bright like that you can darken it down a little bit. Just tap a little bit of your other color and sort of smudge it around so it's not a perfect outline. And that'll just give them just a little more distinction from shape to shape. I'm going to switch brushes so I don't ruin this one because this was a fairly new brush. I'm going to grab one of my older, this is the same brush, the number 8 Filbert, but this one is very old and fluffy. So always save your old brushes for situations like this where you just want it to be Kind of a, oops, kind of a messed up, not too perfect brush. So like right here where these are overlapping, I'm just going to add a little smudge. That had a little more blue in it, but that's okay. Gives it more variation. So I'm just putting a little bit of white and then rubbing most of it off. So it's just a, like a dry brush technique. And I'm just smudging a little bit of that on there so it looks like the light's hitting the side of the brush. So just right where it overlaps. The, the rock that's on top. Around the edge, I'm just adding a little highlight just along the edge. Some of these just look like they're too solid colored. And there's not enough variation. If you take a dry brush technique, just dab a tiny, tiny bit of white and just sort of tap it on there. It'll give more of that period, appearance of a rock texture. And that the light's just hitting on the edge. Oops, that's a little too bright. Let's take a little bit of the dab in the blue-yellow mixture. Just sort of fade that out a little. And again, we don't want these to be too detailed. I'm just trying to give it a little subtle detail that's not going to stand out too much. And again, I'm going on top of this one. This one's on top and it's overlapping that one. So I'm just going right along that edge there. So that makes it stand out a little more. These are kind of blending in too much. So take a little bit of that dry brush with a little bit of white. Just add some of that right along the edge of this one because it's on top. And then just fluff it out. And just do that wherever you see one that's maybe a little too solid colored and you want to add a little texture to it. It's subtle, but it just helps a little bit. Even the ones that are underneath, if you feel like they're just kind of getting too lost, you can add just a little bit of another color. 
So it looks like the light's hitting those two. This is a very dry brush. I barely have any paint on it. I'm just tapping any of the ones I feel like need just a little something on them. A little variation of color, like if I have a really blue rock, I might want to add just a little bit more of a yellowy, lighter shade. Just to give it variation. already that's just starting to look more like rocks just having that rough texture and you can see it's not like a perfect science I'm just smudging a little here a little there because rocks have more variation in their color so it just makes it look like the lights hitting on a few of their bright spots good for now. We can always go back in later. All right, so clean off your brush. We're going to start on this koi fish. So let's start with... So if we want to have a few different patterns of color, let me see what the easiest way to explain it that would be simple you know let's just start with we're going to paint the whole thing orange and then we'll add the white sections afterwards that'll be the easiest way to explain it so we're going to mix our orange color so let's start with um we're going to start with the yellow i'm using my 5 8 angular brush and my brush is a little bit damp try not to get any of that blue in there start with a smudge of yellow and we're going to take just a teeny bit of magenta, because that magenta is going to go a long way. And we're just going to smudge that around until we get an orange shade. And it's okay to start a little darker. That's what we want to do. So start with a tiny bit of magenta, and you can always add more. Okay, that'll be a good base color. So let's just paint the whole fish. Let's make it a little darker. I'm going to take a little more magenta. That's very red. <laughs> Take a little more yellow. We're going to need to add a more of a solid color into it to make it opaque and cover up those dark spots. So we're probably going to have to add a little bit of white and then go back and forth. Get right to that little mouth, the tip there. Okay, smooth that out as best you can. So your brush strokes are all kind of going in one direction. We're going to do a bunch of layers though, so don't worry too much about that. Okay, so we've got some of this dark showing through here. So let's take, we're going to darken up this side. So we're going to take that same color, yellow, big scoopy yellow, and we're going to add a teeny, teeny bit of blue and a little bit of magenta. Mix those together. We're gonna to get kind of a rusty shade. Kind of a browny, orangey brown rust shade. You guys got that? And we're gonna add, so the fish, we're having the light come from this side. So we're gonna, the fish, the left side of the fish is gonna be a little more dark. A little more in shadow. So we're just going along that whole left side. And we're going to go, there's a fin that's going to be right down the center of the fish, so that's kind of nice because it's just sort of going to divide it in half. 
So let's sort of draw a line right down the middle. And we're going to paint that left side with that darker brush color. Again, if your paint's wet, it's probably going to lift on you. So we don't want to drag the brush over it too much because it's going to just start to lift off the previous color. And just do long brush strokes so that also helps avoid lifting. Orange and yellow, they're, they're kind of hard to work with because they do tend to lift a lot. They're not opaque like I was saying, so different colors are easier to work with than others. So let's just let that dry a little bit. And we're going to take a thin line. We're going to do just a little bit so you, you want to get like a curve feeling. So we do want this to be darker right along the edge. So let's take that color and we're just going to do a thin line right along that right side. So the left side's going to be way thicker, the right side's going to be a lot thinner. Oops. I'm lifting. Just lightly adding a little more of the dark. Okay, I'll let that dry. Clean off your brush. Let's work on the fins a little bit. So let's take a scoop of white. Same brush. Scoop of white, a little bit of blue. Tiny, tiny, tiny bit of blue. Mix that around, and we're going to take a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of magenta. Barely any, like teeny, teeny. Okay, maybe a teeny, teeny more. Okay, so it's kind of a periwinkle shade. Let's do a little more on the blue side, though. Take a tiny bit more blue. So this is going to be, these are going to be the white fins. But see how you can compare how bright the white is to this? When you're painting something white, you never want to start with the pure white. You want to build up to it to really make it have some depth and dimension. So we're going to do this sort of bluish periwinkle shade. Dip your brush in the water. Add a little bit of water to that so it's nice and flowy. Now with this, we're just going to go ahead and paint the fins on. Let's go ahead and start. We'll just do the tail. I was going to paint the background color first, but that's okay. We don't need to. So we're going to do the tail with this whole color here. Go right off the top. A little bit around the point of the tail. So go along the top, top, a little bit around the left side and right side. The little pointy part of the brush. Okay, now we want this to be a little flowy. So I'm holding the pointy part of my brush down and I'm just gonna fling it to create a little bit of a wispy Tail. I'm going to do a few of those. That just gives it more of a flowy feel. We'll fix that later if you got on the orange like I did. Same thing. We're going to have, make sure it's got a little bit of water in it so it's nice and flowy. And we're going to do our fins. So the fins come about, these flowy ones, come about... Mm, about halfway between where the curve is and where this is, so about right here. So I'm going to add the pointy side of my brush down like this, 
And this is going to be kind of a swooping, we want these to be very feathery. So we're going to swoop out and around. So I'm using the flat part of my brush. And I'm just, I need a little more water. That's going to be a little more flowy. A little more water. It's a good start. And then we're going to, it's going to be a little, how do I describe this? Like, let me just do it. <laughs> so I'm using the flat part of my brush and I'm lifting up. So it's just very light and airy. I want this edge to be a little thicker and then I'm lifting up. So there's like kind of feathery looking. So make sure you get the base right, so it's growing right out of the side, but then you fling your wrist up so you get that feathery tip to it. So I'm like kind of push down and flick. You might want to practice that a little bit if you don't feel like you have a good control. See so if you push down and flick up, push down and flick up, you'll get these very wispy little, little uh, wings or um, <laughs> fins. If you're nervous about this and you want to let your background dry a lot more, give it an extra 10 minutes or so for the background to dry. So if you do mess up, you can take a wet brush and just sort of wipe it away while it's still wet. So I'm going to do this side now, so you want to make sure these are even. So I'm going to have this one start about right here. And if you want to just draw a little guideline to start with where you're going to go, you can do that. And I'm just going to start right at the base. And then I'm just going to flick. Mm -hmm. so you want it really flowy, so just make sure you just got a nice flow. Don't get too heavy handed because you want this to be very light. We're going to add more layers to make it a little brighter, so don't worry too much. This isn't the final part of it. And then you need a couple lower fins that are going to be here and here. So I'll put the pointy part of the brush down. And I'm just doing like miniature versions of these. I'm gonna make those a little more flowy. I've seen a lot of different shapes for the fins on these, so I don't think these bottom ones are quite as flowy, so we want these to kind of be a little more contained here and then come in tight to the body. So keep this nice and tight here and more flowy there. Okay, now I'm going to add a little bit of white to my brush. Just tap it off so it's just a lighter shade of that. Not completely white yet. I'm just kind of mixing this in. And I'm going to add a little bit of white along this edge right here. With the pointy part of my brush, I'm using that flat side. And I'm just going to flow. I'll put a little more water on my brush because it's a little too thick. streak, a few little streaks, and I'm not pushing down hard, I'm just using that pointy part of my brush. And I'm just going to add some little streaks, very lightly, keep it fairly watery. I just want it to feel wispy. We're going to do the same thing on here. And we want these fins kind of like split in two. So let's make this one on this half like this. If you picture this being divided in half, let's make this a little more bright. And then we'll split this. Some long streaks. Just keep it wispy and light. Put a little more of that white. And I'm using the flat edge of my brush and I'm just flicking towards. So I'm going like this and flicking towards the body. So I have that. And if that's not working for you, use the tip of the brush and you can just do little streaks like this. So it's sort of that um, 
When you look at fins, they kind of have like that feathery, veiny effect. So we'll add a few lines to make it look sort of transparent and flowy. And we're not completely bright white yet, so that's just one of the layers. We'll get a little brighter after this dries a little more. Well, that's a good start. Let's add a little bit of a lighter edge to the sides so it stands out. We'll let that dry a little. Let's go back to the body of the fish. Let's make a brighter orange. Let's take some yellow, a little bit of magenta. That was a lot. So don't mix it into the whole pile right away. That's why I always mix off to the side. So I can see where I'm at and then not mix it all in at once so I can do it gradually. Let's go with that lighter, brighter orange. And let's go right down the middle. We're gonna need to add a little white because it's not showing up enough. So let's take a little bit of white, and mix it into that. And let's go from about right here down the middle. The body starts to curve like that. And we're just going to blend half of the body a little bit lighter. Because if we don't add a little white to it to make it more opaque, or opaque, that brighter orange with all that yellow in it, it's just not going to show up on top of this dark orange. So we're going to have to go back and forth a little bit. We'll add orange on top of this color. Okay, so you get a little brighter there. Now let's make a little more, I'm gonna need more yellow. Mm. Ooh, that's still got a lot of green in it. Start with a clean pile of yellow because we've got all that blue in there. So take a scoop of yellow, a little bit of magenta. Make a nice bright orange. It's okay if this one's a little darker because we're gonna paint the left side of the body with that orange color. I don't want any white of the canvas showing up. I've got like a little bit of white on this edge, so just want to make sure I've got all that covered. I went over too far. Going that far right side too. Make it a little more solid. I've got too much canvas showing through there. I'm adding a little bit of white to the orange so I can get that nose or the mouth more coverage. Putting a little yellow on my brush and I'm just gonna bring some yellow right on top of that lighter side just to kind of brighten up that whole side there. brush. Okay, this is dry. I took a little break to make sure everything was dry. Let's add some more white to these fins here. So I'm wetting my 5 8 angular brush so it's nice and watery. Adding a little bit of white 
just smear it around so it's very thin and watered down. And I'm just doing the pure white. I'm not adding the mix. Just pure white and I'm going to add just a little bit along this edge here. And then just a few little wispy bits more towards the outside edge. So we keep it a little bit darker right there towards the body. Ooh, that's pretty. So just kind of play with it and let the brush work its magic for you because you can get some really pretty wispy layers if you just let the brush do the work for you. A little more white on there so it's a little more opaque. And we're going to add some little wispy bits on the tail now. Get a little more white, a little less water. You just want to do a little bit at a time so you build it up. So you're going to end up with just a couple parts that are going to be bright, bright white. nice and bright. I'm just streaking very lightly. I'm not pushing down hard with the brush. I'm just using the very tippy part, the pointy part, just to keep it thin and wispy. even going to clean off my brush. I'm going to take a little bit of yellow, swirl my brush around the teeny teeny bit of magenta. More yellow than magenta. Keeping it nice light. Let's see. I'm going to add just a little bit of that lighter color right down the middle. Just creating a little bit of a highlight. And then clean off your brush. And let's switch to our tiny brush, our little number two round. And we'll just take a little bit of that. And we're going to add a little stripe right at the, right at the nose, or the mouth nose area, just to give a little definition where the mouth is. And then clean off your brush. We're going to switch to our number eight filbert. We're going to take a little bit of this lighter mixture, put a little bit of that into the bright orange, and we're just going to dab, dab, like kind of right down the center here on both sides. Just dabbing, kind of smashing down. You don't want like perfect circles, but this is going to create a little bit of texture and make it feel like they're scales. mainly on the top part because that's where the light is going to hit the fish and give it the most dimension because the, the sides will be a little darker so you won't see the details as much. But you want this right down the center. We're going to avoid this area because we want the head to feel like it kind of curves downwards and has a little more shape so you won't see the light hitting that uh, part where it curves down as much. Just do a bunch of these. Some of them can be flat, some of them can be 
like the tip of the brush. So you just see little bits. You don't want them to all be the exact same shape. Okay. You also don't want it to get smashed. So you just want little, little taps from the tip of the brush. Then we're gonna add just a little more white to this mix, maybe a little yellow. Just getting a little lighter and now we're gonna add little bits of that here and there. We're going to do less of these brighter highlights. a little more white, a little more yellow, and we'll do even less of these, and we're going to keep these right towards the center. Just going a little bit lighter. take uh, Scoopy Yellow. We're going to add some of this texture on the sides, but we're going to keep it a little darker, not so bright. A little bit of magenta to make a nice orangey shade. Let's take a teeny bit of white, only because it's not going to be opaque. It's going to be kind of transparent. We can take some of that because just the yellow and magenta like we talked about before will be too transparent. So. We need to add just a tiny bit of white into it so it will show up. So we're going much darker. So we can just add a little bit of that same texture along this right side and the left side. It's going to be subtle. It's not really going to show up much, but it's just going to add a little bit of that textural feeling so it feels like scales. We will be painting a little extra shadow on each of these sides, so if we're losing that darkness, that's okay. We'll bring it back in. I brought in a little bit of that lighter color. Just come down a little bit on that side. Okay, clean off your brush. Okay, so we're gonna be doing an eyeball right on the side here. And we'll, a hint of one over here. So we're gonna take some white and a little tiny bit of, we wanna mix like a similar color to what we did here. So a little magenta, a little blue with some white mixed in. And that's a little too dark, let's do more white. So we just don't want it to be pure white yet. So that'll be good, sort of a, Bluish periwinkle shade. Oh wait, any more white? Okay, we only need a tiny bit of this, but a little more blue. Okay. Spinning my brush, taking most of the paint off. So the eye is gonna be about right here. So you're just gonna paint a little I would make it kind of kind of an oval shape. You don't want it to be totally round because we're not looking at it straight on from the side. So I'm 
doing this a little bit curved and then swooping down. So almost like a half circle, kind of. <laughs> and then over here, we're just gonna see a tiny bit popping out on that side. Then we'll take a little bit of black. I didn't even clean off my brush. I'm just taking a little bit of black. And then we're gonna do a little bit of an eyeball, like a half circle. brush. We're going to put a little eyelid sort of thing. Let's take a little bit of this light orange. There's too much water on my brush there. And we're just going to do a little swipe on the top like this. And just curve that a little bit so it feels like it's a it's kind of like an eyelid. <laughs> We're going to do the same thing over on this side. Just kind of implying there's an eye over on that side too. But we're going to curve this out that way. So it's kind of popping out of the side of the head. And we can do a little bit underneath too. Because they have kind of bulgy bulgy eyes. And then clean your brush. And we're going to do a little highlight because right now that's just kind of solid. Clean off your brush, dry it off, take a teeny teeny bit of white or white and yellow. So it's not too bright white. I'm just doing a little swipe right in the center of it just to give it a little bit of a highlight. Okay, clean off your brush. should be bigger. Let's make the whole thing bigger. I'm going to take a little black. I'm going to fill that whole thing in so the actual pupil part is bigger. Just looked like it was too small for the for the body there. They have pretty big bulgy eyes lots of times. Take that and then I'm going to take a little bit of that lighter periwinkle color and do a little swipe underneath it. Just a skinny little line. Make sure it curves around. Let's do a teeny little swipe of white. Give it a little shine. And then I want to make this eyelid thing a little bit bigger. And that didn't show up very much. Let's add a little more white and a little more yellow. Make that a little more bulbous, which means we gotta make this one pop out a little more. Get a little more of an orange look. That's really light. swipe on the mouth here to make that stand out a little more.
All right, clean your brush. And let's do this little fin that comes right down the front there. I'm going to take my 5 8 angular brush again, some white, and I'm going to use that periwinkle color likely used for the other fins. Take a tiny bit of blue, tiny bit of magenta, mixing that off to the side so I don't ruin my pile of white yet. Get that shade right over here and then I'll mix it into the white here. So I have this pretty... Why does my alarm keep going off? Oh, I have to leave. <laughs> I have an appointment in 10 minutes. Okay, let's just do this real quick. So we're gonna go right along this center and then it's gonna be sort of a feathery, flowy, thin type of thing. So let's start about kind of where these fins are. We'll start about right here. And we're just gonna create these little wispy implications of a fin. And then that last one will be a little longer. We'll take just a tiny bit of white and we'll go over it, creating some layers. And then maybe a little more white and just get that front part nice and bright. And we just add some little wispy Fins there, and then clean off your brush. I am a dummy. I forgot to put the the white um, spots in there. <laughs> so let's do that now. We're gonna take our let's use let's see let's use our five eighths angular. We're gonna make some more of that periwinkle light light. Periwinkle color, so we'll take some white, take a teeny bit of blue, a little bit of magenta, that was a lot, oh my goodness, it's way less than that. Okay, a little more blue in there. Usually I keep it more periwinkle when I'm doing a white shade when I'm starting with the dark part, but I want to make it a little more blue because it's under the water. So it's going to have a little more of a blue look to it. Okay, so let's do one shape right here. We're going to just go like this. And we're just going to make, it doesn't have to be perfect. We'll touch that uh, white fin up again after. So we want this to be, you don't want to go straight across. You want to follow the curve of the fish. So this is going to give it a lot of dimension. So what we're going to do is curve up. And just paint right over that fin so it's not distracting us. And then we're going to curve down and around like that. So it's going to be like a stripe going around the fish. Get right to the edge there. And curve around. So, and it's okay if it's a little, a little bumpy on the edges, because this, the scales would make it appear a little bit bumpy anyways. So you can just kind of wiggle your, your line a little bit. And then let's do another one right over here, a little smaller one. And again, we're going to curve it around. Whenever you're doing something that has a um, drawing something or painting something that has a shape to it, you want to pretend that that's three dimensional and you can actually feel yourself going around it. So we're wrapping around. And because the top of this, the ridge is a little bit more on that side because you're seeing more of the side of the, the fin, the tail here. So you want this to come, the curve of it, to come just a little more this way. If you picture an invisible line creating the very top ridge of the fish, because these ridges, or these fish are kind of 
more, they're not like a big fat sausage, they're a little more squished, <laughs> so the top of it's going to have a little bit more of a, um, what am I trying to say? You know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> it's more squished, so the top of it is going to be a little more of a peak instead of a flat rounded top to it. You know what I mean? I know what I'm trying to say, I just don't always explain it <laughs> as well as I'm thinking it. So because this down here, it's a little more at the center of it, of the top of it is uh, more in the middle. We're going up and then we're coming back down. Over here, it's going up and then you barely see the other side of it. So the curved part of it is going to be a little bit further to the right. Does that make more sense? Hopefully, hopefully that does. Okay, you're not really going to see much of it wrapping around the other side. And then... Let's carry this over a little bit, just to give it a little bit more of an interesting design. Hey, Poet, what do you want? Poet's trying to knock me over here. I'm going to carry it all the way over here. What, bud? What do you want? What? Why are you staring at me? And then I had accidentally brought orange into that fin there. I didn't mean to. So let's just carry this over a little bit, and we're going to... Add a little more paint to that fin, because I want this to be a little thinner here and curve around into it. So I'm going to bring a little more of this color around here. And this will make more sense once we get all the highlights on there. Okay. And then, let's see, do we want to add any more white? Mm. I'm going to have this, bring this over to the very top edge a little more. Okay. I think that's good for now. some scales. So let's take a little bit of white, mix it into a little bit of that. So we go a little bit lighter, just a little bit lighter. And then we're just going to pounce. And let's go a little darker. I don't want to get that light yet. I'm just kind of pounce in the brush, giving it some texture. I'm using my number eight filbert. I'm smashing it down so I have that nice flattened side of the brush. I'm just turning my brush different directions just to give it a different pattern of the feel of the little scales. And just do that anywhere where we have this color. Just little bits. Get my brush a little wet because my paint's getting a little dry. I'm just kind of smudging little shapes. Sometimes it's a full smudge, sometimes it's just like the tip of the brush. I just want it really textury. It's a little weird right now, but give it a few minutes. I got a little messy. Take some of the darker ones back in there. And I'm going to take a little more white, make it a little bit lighter, and then I'm going to focus on the lighter parts being a little bit higher towards the top. Then a little more white, get a little brighter, and do 
some lighter, brighter smudges. Kind of like if anyone did the hydrangea painting tutorial that I did. Similar how we started darker and then we got a little lighter, a little lighter, a little lighter with the petals. These are kind of like those petals. And if you like these colors and layers, check out that tutorial. That's a fun one. And everybody that sends me pictures of their paintings that they did of that hydrangea painting, oh my gosh, they're all so different and beautiful, but they all came out so good. I love seeing your paintings that you do from these tutorials. It makes me so happy. So thank you for everybody that shares those with me. You can send them to me through Instagram or Facebook or my email. It's down in my description box. And then lots of times I'm, I'm going to try to start sharing your pictures that you send me. I forgot to do that in my last tutorial, but I'm going to do that at the end of this one. Because I like to show off how great your work is. I'm so proud of it. Okay, now I'm going to do pure white and just do little dabs just along this top, very, very top part right here. So that's the brightest spot, getting hit by the light. Okay. Alrighty. Let's do just a little more. I'm making it a little darker. A little more over here, because I covered up some of those. Not too bright on these far sides, but just a little bit. So it shows up once um, we're done and we're ready to do a, a shadow. We're going to paint a shadow around here. I don't want it to completely cover up all of those highlights. Okay, clean up your brush. And let's take our 5 8 angular brush. And take some of that darker periwinkle. Might need to make a little more. We're going to fix this fin here because we covered that up. So let's mix that color again. And we're just going to do that again. That's a little dark. I'm just going to go over the whole thing. Take a little bit of white. Go a little lighter, and a little more white. I can always go back in and brighten it up later. Okay. Clean your brush off. And let's take a little break from the fish. We're going to work on the, the lily pads. So let's take a scoop of white or yellow, a little bit of blue, and let's take a teeny bit of magenta. I'm going to make um, kind of an olive greenish color. Let's see. Now well, that'll be a start. Just paint the whole pad. We're gonna have lots of shades of green in this one, so this won't be the final, final look of it. I'm gonna start with kind of a dark green, an olive green, so it's not um, too bright. Magenta tones it down a little bit, makes it just a little deeper. I have a little too much water mixed in on my brush, so it's very streaky. Well, that's all right. And then when you do your brush stroke, or when you paint this, you're going to have brush strokes. See, especially if you watered it down as much as I did, so you're going to have a lot of brush strokes. So if you do have a lot of brush strokes, you might as well just make them work in your favor. So you want to draw them towards the center of the lily pad, which would be right here. If this was a full circle, the center would be right where that corner is. So just make all of your brush strokes go towards that center. And let's do the same thing on this one. Color it solid. And 
I need more yellow. Go through a lot of yellow in this painting. More blue, more magenta, a lot of yellow. And more magenta. And there goes Poet. Someone's walking by. How dare they? It's gonna go bark at him. So I'm just pretending like the center of my lily, lily pad is about right here. So I'm bringing all of these in towards that center point. And this bottom one, same thing. If the center of the lily pad was about right here, you want to angle everything in towards that center. I like to just get it all covered first with paint and then you can streak it towards that center. having a lot of paint lifting on me today. Well, that's okay, because we're going to add lots of layers to that, so we're going to let that dry for a little bit. Then we're going to move back onto our clay fish. We're going to add a little shadow right along the side of him. So let's take a little blue and a little magenta. We're making a purpley shade. A little more blue. And let's take a tiny bit of white. A little more. And I'm dipping my brush in the water. So it's pretty, whoa, it's very drippy. Soak a little bit of that off. You do want it very thin and transparent. You could also use a, um, a liquid medium. Um, to thin it out. Is that what I'm thinking? No, glazing liquid. Glazing medium. Sorry. <laughs> um, I do have some of that somewhere, but I'm just going to use water in this case. But some people don't like to use water. They feel like it thins the paint out too much, but either one would work great. So what I'm going to do is I'm using my 5 8 angular brush, and I'm going to drag it along just that left side. All along that left side like that. No, it looks really dark and scary right now. Clean off your brush. I'm just doing one long stroke. Clean off your brush, wipe off all the paint. And then we're going to lightly drag our brush over that again. Back and forth to take off a little bit of that color. I'm just taking a clean, damp brush with my, with my bristles flat down. And this is just sort of dragging it and spreading it out lightening it up a little bit. And if you just lightly, lightly kind of feather your brush, sort of spread it out. You just want a thin, like we can touch up the mouth afterwards. And then let's do it. Oh man, so many interruptions today. 
We're gonna use the skinny part of the brush and just a little bit. There should be a little bit, putting a little bit more on your brush if you don't have a little on there. Right along the right side, just a little bit. Skinnier on this side. And then flatten your brush, drag your brush, and we're kind of spreading it out. You wanna make sure your fish is really, really dry if you're nervous about this, because the more you rub it and rub it, you might lift off your paint, and you don't wanna do that. So just, you can go right over the eye, and you're just gonna feather your brush so you see a little bit of darker on that side. This side, it's okay if it kind of goes, um, like there's more of a harsh line, that's okay. Take a little more of that, and we're just gonna feather out just a little bit from the base of where the, where the fins are there. Just a tiny bit. We're gonna do it right here, right at the base. And then right, um, keep this nice and bright and white, and right on this side, just add a little bit. So there should be barely any on your brush, and we're just feathering it out really lightly, just creating a little more of a shadow right at the base, giving a little more dimension and depth to those fins there. Let's do it again right here. We could do a little right here. Make sure you don't have a lot of paint on your brush. Do a few streaks in there. Just with the tip of your brush, I'm just doing it really lightly. Barely, barely touching. I'm cleaning off my brush so it's just a little damp because I got a little bit of paint really thick there. I just want to smooth it out. Okay, let's see. Yeah, just a little more. Right there. If you add too much here, you can always take a little more white. our town. How dare anybody walk by. But at least he's not snoring behind the camera today. Or at least I didn't notice. Hopefully he wasn't. Or making other noises like he usually does. separate these two sections a little bit. Did you get them? Good job. You're so tough, poet. So tough. Okay. And let's touch up this little mouth area a little bit. Let's take our tiny brush, number two, round. Oops, I got some blue on it. And let's take a scoop of yellow and a little magenta. Make a nice orangey shade. And let's pump up those lips a little bit. Give that fish a lip job. Just make it a little thicker. There we go. That's looking more fish like. Take a little tiny bit of white, maybe a little yellow. And just add a little highlight right down the middle of that. And then it needs a little whisker too. So clean off your brush. Same brush, tiny brush. Take a little bit of white. A little bit of white, thinned out. You want it just a little watery. I'm mixing a little bit of that periwinkle color. And then you're just gonna do a little wisp, right? From each side, left and right. I don't want it to be too bright. Just tone it down a little bit. Okay. All right. Clean off your brush. Okay. I gave myself a fresh new palette because my palette was getting very old and dry. And little pieces of paint weren't chipping off. Okay, so let's get back to these lily pads. I'm using my 5 8 angular brush, and we're gonna mix a brighter green. So let's take a big scoop of yellow, a little bit of blue, and 
We're just gonna do a variety of different greens, different shades of green. Let's put a little more yellow in there and a little bit of white. A little bit of white. The white will really, really brighten it up. So start with just a little, do a little more yellow in there. Okay. And then we're just gonna start adding some streaks. Start on the edge there. You know what, let's make this edge of the lily pad a little more rippled. So I'm gonna clean off my brush and make some more of that darker green. So let's take a scoop of yellow. We don't want any white in it, so we'll start fresh. Scoop of yellow, scoop of blue. And let's do more yellow in that. And a little bit of magenta. And it's okay if it's even a slightly different shade than what you started with the first time. I'm gonna do more yellow, a little more blue. I put a little too much magenta, so it made it a little bit too brown. So let's just get it a little more greenish, olive green. And that'll be fine for now. It's not perfectly olive green, but that's okay. And we're just gonna do some little ridges, little bumps, just to give it a little more interest so it's not so straight and perfect. This is a totally different color than I had the first time, but that's okay. Makes it more interesting when you have lots of different shades. Let's do that on the edge of this one too. Just wiggle it a little bit. You can use a smaller brush if you feel like this one's too big. Do the same thing down here. This one already has a little wiggle, but just make sure that it's got that darker on the edge. Okay, then we can add a few streaks this color. And again, making sure they're angling towards that center of the lily pad. Keep it streaky so it's not solid. Sorry, stick my head in front of your face there. Okay, let's get the bottom of that one. Okay, now you don't even have to clean off your brush. Dab a little bit of that lighter color. And then we're just gonna add some streaks. I'm using the skinny part, or the pointy part of my brush, and I'm just adding some streaks. I'm using the flat side and the, and the skinny side, so I'm kind of flipping my brush different directions just to give it a variation of, of strokes. Same thing down here. Just add lots of streaks to it. Highlight on the edge of it. Right there. And blending it out. And a little bit of white mixed in there and doing some lighter shades now. That's really thick. I'm going to wash down my brush because there's so much paint on my brush now, it's really thick and so it's not 
blending out very easily. So now my brush is a little bit damp. Oh, that's really damp. It's drippy. Just want a little watered down so we can get just kind of light and streaky and that way if it's a little bit watered down other colors will show through so it won't just cover it solid with the with the lighter color so for this I'm just kind of layering lots of different colors until it looks I don't know, until I like it. <laughs> you can do this, add as much color and streaks as you want. Just kind of building it up until we get to a place where we like it. I think I want to go a little brighter green. So it's a good idea, instead of just adding white to colors, so you end up with the same like basic color, just lighter and darker. You want to have a variety. You want to have some warm tones and some cool tones. It just makes it a lot more interesting and gives more variety. So let's mix up another shade of green. I'm going to do, clean off my brush. I'm going to do a brighter green. So I'm going to take a scoop of yellow, a teeny bit of blue. And I'm not going to add white this time. When you add the white, it kind of mutes it down a little bit sometimes. It's kind of more flat. This will be a lot more vibrant. Yeah, that's a lot more vibrant. So let's just add a few streaks and it's a lot warmer having like so much of that yellow in there. And just do it a little bit here and there. Just gives it a whole nother level of brightness and color. And because there's so much yellow, it's very transparent, so you could even just do pure yellow like right over the top of all the other parts and it's gonna, the other colors will show through because it is so transparent, so just gives it a whole other level of color, brightens up the whole thing. And just play with it. Have fun with this. Just mix colors and if you don't like it, remember it's acrylic paint. You can just paint right over it. it. Dries fast so you don't have to wait a long time in between for colors to dry or paints to dry. Take a little bit more of that lighter color. Take a little bit of that white mix. Just go back and forth. Pick a little more white. I'm just adding little bits here and there. Get off my brush because my paint's getting really thick again. I'm just using a damp brush. off the extra water and I'm just using a damp brush now kind of spreading this out a little just want to add little highlights here and there
I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. I'm starting to lift a lot of the colors again, so. Let that dry. And then we're gonna work on the water. So I wanna give this an overall very light wash of blue. Try and decide. Try and decide if I want the background to be darker or more of a light, um, kind of a crystal blue water. Because we could do a light wash over the whole thing, or we could do a little bit of a darker wash. I think I'm gonna go, let's go lighter. Okay, so I'm gonna take my one inch flat wash brush. Okay, take your, a scoop of yellow, and a big scoop of blue. make that tealy color. So we have a little more blue than we do yellow. So it's not as, unless you're going with a green water, then you'd want more yellow. And then, I keep changing my mind if I wanna go darker. Let's go darker. Okay, take some more blue. And then I'm gonna dip my brush in the water. So it's very drippy and it's gonna be very watered down. But just make sure it's not too thick so you cover up. And we're just gonna lightly wash over everything we did there. So you wanna be able to still see those rocks coming through. But we're just doing a light wash. And again, you can use that glazing medium. If you have a glazing medium, you can use that in this um, section right here of the painting, this portion. So I'm just doing a thin, light wash over all of the water area. And just kind of blend your brush out so it's not too streaky. See, that's just giving it like a little bit of an overall tone. Just darkening it up a little bit. But by having all those highlights on those rocks, they should still stand out as long as you're not painting too thick. Just see, it just kicks it back a little bit. I'm gonna stand back and take a look and see if this is what I want. Hmm. Yeah, I think that works. If you don't wanna do this part and darken everything up, then you don't have to. I'm just gonna do a very light, light, light wash over the whole thing. Be careful of your fins. I think by going a little darker, it's going to make our fish pop better. And if you don't like this and you feel like, oh, it, it um, got rid of the rocks, the detail of the rocks, you can always go back in with some more detail on your rocks if you want. Okay, I've got a little bit of this wash. I'm just going to go right over the fins too. so. It, a little bit of that tone. You know what? I don't like that. So I'm going to <laughs> take my clean, take my 5 8 angular brush. Just a clean, barely wet brush. Actually, you can use a dry brush and just wipe away if you did go on top of the fins. Hopefully you didn't do that. I thought it might look better, but I don't like that now. So just clean that off. Okay. Go back to my water over here. Just a thin, thin layer over the rest of the water here.
one's really watery, so I'm getting some drips. You don't want it to be that watery. If it's too, too watery, just mix up a little more paint or tap your brush on a paper towel after you dip it in your watered down mixture just to soak up a little bit of that extra paint. Okay, we didn't go too dark. I just wanted to tone everything down a little bit with that. Okay, so next what we're going to do is add a shadow behind our fish so it looks like you can really see them floating above all those rocks. So I'm just going to take a dry brush and smooth out a little bit anywhere where that was wet and drippy. shadow back onto my fish here with that color. Got a little bit of that paint on my fish, so I'm just blending it out. Drag it in. Okay, so next what we're going to do, you take your 5 8 angular brush, I'm just going to put a tiny bit of black and I'm going to mix it into that watered down watery color that we just made. Just a tiny bit of black. And we're going to add a shadow below the fish and below the lily pads. Let's start with the lily pads. So I'm using the pointy part of my brush. I'm starting at the top of the lily pad. And you're basically, make sure it's watered down. You're doing the same shape, but you're just shifting it a little bit to the right. So I'm just kind of following that shape, going up to the right and below the lily pad. But you want this to be watered down and transparent because you want to be able to see that water and the rocks and things below it. So you don't want this to be a solid line. We're going to do the same thing over here. Let's have, start over here. And then we're going to copy this shape. And then we're going to start this shape here. We're going to start it back a little bit. So let's actually have this come out a little bit quicker. And then we're going to follow along. Let's start with the head. This will just be a little bit. We'll let this kind of come out here. Just a little bit, and we'll have this come up a little bit. Change my mind, just so we see a little. Okay, then the fish, we're going to do the shape of the fish's head, starting below here. Let's have them come out like that. And then this curves like this, you want this to curve like this. Fill it in should be very thin so you can see the background still showing through. And then let's continue the body. And then the fins. Just following along that shape. So try to create these same little wispy things. Or similar. And this under here. And then we'll have some of these on this side. I got some on the fish. 
Popping in that fin there. Copy this fin over here. Let's have the tail come across like that. Okay, let's do a little more work on the lily pads. So I'm going to put a little more yellow. those lily pads to be a little brighter so I'm going to take some yellow mix it into a little bit of this lighter green over here that had some white in it let's just brighten this up a little more and a little bit of water a little more yellow
and some yellow. And I think adding that pure yellow just brightens it up nicely. But again, do whatever colors you like, whatever, whatever speaking to you. You can't go wrong. I'm just adding little bits of white to the edges to give it a little bit of that little highlight on the edges there. And you could spend an hour just adding <laughs> shades to these. You gotta know when to stop. Sometimes I uh, will just go over things back and forth, back and forth, and <laughs> spend way too long. And I end up with the same thing I had at the start. So, But that's the process. Sometimes it just takes a while to experiment and get to a place where you're happy with it. And then I feel like you just know when you know. When you decide it's done, that's when it's done. And definitely step back and look at it every once in a while and decide if it needs something here or there. The other thing I always like to do, I've mentioned this before, I think, is take a picture of it with your phone or your camera or whatever and stand back and look at it So take a photo and then look at it in the photo and you'll notice things that you might not see when you're staring at it. So right away I, I want my rocks to stand out more. Especially over here it got really muddy when I painted that over the top and so I'm going to bring in some details back into the rocks. So I'm going to take my 5 8 angular brush again. And I'm going to take a little bit of white. Let's mix it into this and see what we get. I'm going to put some yellow in there. So I've got some yellow, some blue. This had a little bit of black in it. Let's just see. No, I don't like that. It looks too gray and muted down because it had that black in it. So let's just erase that away. You know what we could do? Actually, let's try this. Take your number eight filbert and get it wet. Wipe off the extra dampness. And we're just gonna, or I'm going to, you don't have to do this. I'm gonna just use a wet brush and swipe away. See if this works. No, that's not gonna work. It's too dry. I thought maybe we could lift off some bits here and there, but okay. I'm gonna take some blue, a little bit of yellow, not much, just a little bit. And make my watercolor, just like we did in the beginning, if you remember back then. Take a teeny bit of white. And I'm going to do what we started doing with the rocks. I'm going to just add some rocks like we did in the beginning. Just a hint of a shade lighter than the water, for starters. I'm just going to redo what we started. Just giving them a little more texture and dimension. Already that's looking better to me. Like just, I lost them. I lost too much of them and I just need to bring a little bit, a little bit back. some bright spots. So 
them just look like the, sh the sun is really shining down on those. Maybe that was a much lighter rock down there and the light's hitting it more than another one. So if you're doing this painting along with me, I would love to hear your comments. Send me a picture. I would love to see pictures of anything that you've painted along with me. And comment down below. Let me know what you thought. Was this an easy one? Was it tricky? Did you go back in and highlight your rocks after? I just I love hearing any of your experiences. tips you found helpful or any tips you want to throw out there for myself or any of my other subscribers or followers. Make sure you like this video please if you're enjoying it. It helps my channel a ton. All the likes and comments too that I have a lot of you asking how you can help me out with my channel so I can get more videos out to you and the likes and comments, the more likes and comments per video, it's just, it just really does help. And subscribe if you haven't and click that little bell so you'll, you'll know right away when I upload something new. Take another photo and 
check it out and see what I think. Actually, let's do another one underneath this. Poet snoring. <laughs> Hopefully that's not too distracting to you. Sorry if it is. He loves to just lay right next to me when I'm painting and take a nap. It's very sweet like that. All right, um, this could go on for a while. <laughs> you could spend endless hours just tweaking and touching up and like I said, you gotta just know when to stop and be done with it. Sometimes it's hard to decide you're done. For me, anyways. spots. I just feel like I need a little more texture on some of these. And again, if you remember from the beginning, you want to mix up these highlights on these rocks a little bit. Like some, maybe you have a little more of a yellow tone in them, greenish. Some have a little more blue. So there's variation. So it looks like there's different color rocks under there, different shades, different textures. wiping most of the paint off my brush so I can have sort of a dry brush, rough, scruffy, like, texture on some of the rocks. Let's do a little bit of a lighter white mix. Let's do that here. here. You want to make sure the edges of the rocks are pretty smooth, but then you can do a little rough texture in the middle of the rock. Sorry, my dishwasher's going. Can you hear that? <laughs> I guess I should have waited to start it. I forgot that you'd probably hear that in the background. <laughs> there it goes. My kitchen is just in the other room there. Because my studio is actually in my, what should be the dining room. I turned it into a studio because I knew I would never use the dining room.
Okay, I'm almost there. <laughs> almost there. I think. I always say that. I know. I just want like a few bright spots that kind of pop out here and there. Just need a little more texture on some of these. I'm just kind of dabbing my brush. It's fairly dry. I'm going to water down my brush because now I feel like the these dark shadows, you can't see any of the rocks showing through them. So I'm watering down my brush and I'm just doing a very thinned out outlining of some of these rocks on top of where the shadows are so they look like they're showing through because I kind of feel like they are getting lost in that dark shadow. You can barely see them. I don't want to cover up the shadow but I just want these to show through a little bit. Look. Okay, that's definitely a lot. <laughs> Brightened up quite a bit. Really added a lot more detail to those rocks, which I'm actually happy with. I like I like more detail. And you might like it the way it was with less detail where you can't see as much, but again, it's just a personal preference. It's, there's no right or wrong with this. If you had less detail, it would just make the water look a little darker, which is totally fine. It could be darker water. Sometimes you can't see down to the bottom as much, and that's 
that's perfectly fine. I just uh, realized I do want more of the rock showing, so again, you do what you like better. Endless options. Adding a few more details here. Okay, let's take a picture and see what we think. Okay, I like that way better. Here's the current, and that was before. So it's not, you might like it better and darker, and that's totally fine. I like that better. And the shadows stand out more now. Cool. Okay, I'm going to do one more little thing. I'm going to take my little tiny brush. My number two round brush, and I'm going to add just a little more highlight on the edges of these lily pads. I'm going to take some white, a little bit of yellow, and water that down just a touch. And I'm just going to do a few little squiggles along the edge, like where it curves, where it bumps up. Add a little bit more there. I feel like it needs a little finish on some of these little ridges. And again, if you don't like this, don't do it. You do it how you want it. And maybe where that bumps up, add just a little, I'm going to switch to my number eight filbert. Where that bumps up, I want to create like a little highlight as if there's a ridge in the lily pad there. Just, just a little bit. It's just a little more detail. Okay, I think we're done. Um, I'll probably say that 10 more times before I'm actually done because I just noticed something else. I'm gonna take a little bit of a little bit of yellow and a tiny bit of white. Just need a little Oh, we lost our little whiskers too. I'm going to add a little wisp there. That's pretty bright. I'm going to tone that down just a little bit with a little blue. I'm just going to see if there's any other little... Oh, you know what? There are a few more highlights. I want to take, I'm going to take my little brush with white thinned out a little bit. And I'm going to add just a couple more white, bright, bright white highlights on the front. And I got some blue painted over on this section too. So I'm just going to add a little bit of white just to get the brightest whites. The last stage of the painting, getting those bright, bright whites in just a few little sections. Maybe a couple of these little Fins there on the edge here. If you got any blue painted over on some of your hearts when you're doing the water, you can go back in now and touch those up. Just a few here and there. And then on this top fin here, I feel like we lost a lot of the bright white.
bit of white right in his eyeball. Right where the white of the eyeball was. Just to make that pop a little more. And maybe just a few little tiny white dots. I might erase this, so hold on. <laughs> yeah, that kind of creates a little bit of sparkle. Just do it along the top ridge of the body so it has more of a shine and gives it just a little more shape. Especially on the white section of his coloring. You can even take a little bit of yellow, pure yellow and white and add a few of these dots on the orange part. Try not to get any blue in there. I'm going to do pure, pure yellow if I can find some. You can even dab the pure yellow on top of the white dots to make it really, really bright. Bright yellow. A little highlight right on the curve of the eye, like the top of the eyelid there. Take some yellow, do a little bit on that side, a little bit right in the center of the curve so it looks like the light's hitting where it arches. Okay, that makes it more sparkly with those little highlights. Keep this a little darker here so it looks like the nose kind of turns downward. Okay. I'm going to take just a little bit of white, some yellow, and do a little row of dots right down. Remember that line we had down the center? So it was like lighter on this side, a little darker on that side, just to make this more defined, that there's a highlight right down the center. Okay, are we done? Let's see. Possibly. All right, let's take one more picture. Oh yeah, okay, look at the difference. Adding all those little highlights, doesn't that make it shimmer and sparkle? Look at before. That's good, but that's better. See what I mean? You could just go on for hours and hours adding more and more detail, so it could be hard to stop, and I don't want to make this a four hour long video and frustrate anybody and make it too difficult, but I mean, looking at the 
changes that we made, it just makes it better and better and better. And you could stop there and just keep the water dark and be done with it, but look at how much that adds. So I think I'm gonna stop here. I could add things for another two hours, <laughs> but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and sign my painting and I think we will call this one done. Thank you so much for painting with me. Add my little ladybugs. So as promised, I have some of your artwork that I want to share with everybody. Here we go. The first one is by Casey Heffernan and she gathered up a group of friends and turned it into a paint party and they painted my Tropical Sunset video. I love this. It's so much fun and their paintings came out so great. Our next one is by Tara. I don't know her last name, but she just started painting a month ago, if you can believe that. That's insane. I'm so impressed and I just can't even tell you. Our next ones are from Sadaf Gulshad. Oh, I really hope I said that right. Um, check out all five of her designs. They are beautiful. She did so many and it was so fun to see all these. And our very last one is by my new friend, Bobby. I met him through YouTube a couple of months back and he painted my Phoenix Palm design. And I am so proud of you, Bobby. It came out great. I know you struggled in the beginning, but in the end, you did such a good job. So that wraps up today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.